As a cloud developer, one realization you quickly have is that despite being on the cloud, you don't want everything publicly accessible. In this episode of Cloud Networking, we cover how to protect your internal endpoints using Cloud NAT. Stay tuned. Let's say you've got a cloud application with internal services and you want to restrict inbound communication while still allowing outbound. One of the traditional ways to do this would be through a VPN service that secures, authorizes, and handles that connection for you, which is fine, but runs into a large problem that you're still using public IPs, which leaves you vulnerable to malicious actors. Another secure setup would be something called a bastion host, basically an external endpoint which allows your clients to SSH from the public internet and still keep your apps from being public facing, which Again, works, but this only deals with one side of the problem, namely inbound communication. But let's say you have a multi-tiered application set up in the cloud and you have an update server on premise. You want to allow your instances outbound access to the internet for updates, patching, config management, and more without having an external IP address. That way, you can keep your instances entirely internet facing in a controlled and efficient manner. For this, it makes a lot more sense to set up a network address translation, NAT, gateway machine, which routes traffic and lets multiple VMs in a subnet reach the internet using a single public IP address. Now, normally this requires a fair bit of toil. Building a high availability and high bandwidth NAT gateway usually requires reserving static IP addresses, creating compute instance groups as the NAT gateways, creating health checks to monitor their responsiveness, and adding default routes to these instances. And with traditional NATs, you'd have a NAT proxy instance between your cloud instances and their destination. This means a potential choke point in the path, undermining performance, throughput, and availability. Fortunately, Google Cloud NAT is a software-defined networking SDN solution that avoids these problems. It's a fully managed offering that lets Google Cloud VM instances without external IP addresses and private GKE clusters connect to the internet. It doesn't require custom routing and simplifies and delivers scale because it uses SDN instead of being an instance or an appliance that you have to manage. And better yet, outside resources can't directly access any of the private instances behind Cloud NAT, thereby helping to keep your VPCs isolated and secure. The best part, it doesn't use a proxy. Instead, each of your internal instances is given a unique set of NAT IPs and port ranges, which are used by Andromeda. Google's network virtualization stack to perform that. This means no choke points, better scalability, performance, and availability. Cloud NAT scales seamlessly with the number of instances and the volume of network traffic. And you get as much bandwidth as instances that do have external IP addresses. Let's dive into how to set up Cloud NAT. Here I have two VMs set up in the same VPC and subnet. I want web server to be private, so I've set it up with no external IP address. In order to access it, I've set up a second VM to act as a Bastion host, which does have an external IP and allows for inbound traffic to my web server. I've also set up firewall rules so that I can only use the Bastion host to SSH into the web server. I'm using the local terminal to SSH into the Bastion host to then SSH into the web server. You can see here, I don't have the ability to access the public internet because when I try to pull content from example.com, it hangs. Now, let's set up Cloud NAT to route egress traffic from the web server to the internet using Cloud NAT's allocation of IP addresses. Head to the Google Cloud NAT page and click Get Started. Enter a gateway name, choose the VPC network your instances are in, set the region for the NAT gateway, which should be the same as where your instances are. Now create a cloud router in the region and give it a name. Leave the rest as default. Leave the NAT IP addresses to automatic, which is recommended and automatically allocates IP addresses based on usage. These IPs are used to translate the internal addresses of instances. And now click Create. Now going back to my web server instance, I can now access example.com and see its content while it still has no external IP address. 
It's important to note that CloudNAT doesn't set up inbound NAT, so instances outside your VPC can't initiate their own new connections to your cloud instances with NAT. But CloudNAT is a great managed service for things like fetching periodic updates from an external server in another network. As you grow your cloud environment, centralizing control and simplifying your network topology is going to save you cycles in the long run. Stay tuned for the next episode, and remember, optimizing your network means freeing up your bit.